Given a times b is equal to 0, we know that either a or b is equal to 0. Meaning, if I let a is equal to 0, yes, 0 times b will give us 0. Likewise, if I let b is equal to 0, meaning a times 0, that gives us 0 as well. So we know that either a is equal to 0 or b is equal to 0. If we have a times b, if we have two things multiplied to each other and it's set equal to 0, then one or the other, meaning a or the b, will be equal to 0. Actually, it could also be both, okay? which includes a or b as well. Then, if we were to have an equation, x minus 7 times x plus 2 is equal to 0, let me emphasize x minus 7 is 1, and x plus 2 is the other. If we have two things multiplied and set equal to 0, it means that either the first is equal to 0, or the second is equal to 0. If we solve, we get x equals to 7 from this, and we get x equals to negative 2 from that. So if we were given this equation, parentheses x minus 7 times parentheses x plus 2 equals 0, then x is either 7 or negative 2. So let me go ahead and do a couple more examples, a quadratic function, uh, to show you um, how we could use this. Here's a pretty standard quadratic equation set equal to 0. To solve for x, what we're going to do is first factor this. If we factor x squared minus 5x minus 24, we're going to start with x and x. And then since the sign is negative, the third um, one, we're going to go plus minus. And to get a uh, difference of 5, we're going to go with um, 3 here and 8 here. Okay. So learning to factor is part of Algebra 1, which is not covered um, in my lessons, but it's something you might want to go back to Algebra 1 and practice, because you do need to be able to factor a quadratic equation into this format. Okay? So then from this, we know that either x plus 3, meaning the first parenthesis, is going to equal to 0, or x minus 8, meaning the second parenthesis portion, is equal to 0. So we get either x equals negative 3 or x equals to positive 8. And of course you notice that when we have that positive 3, it's negative 3 here for obvious reasons because we solve for that. And then if it's x minus 8, x equals to positive 8. It's the opposite sign. But it's better to understand why the signs are different rather than just memorizing the um, changing the signs, it's because we take whatever is in the parentheses, set it equal to zero, and then solving it give us the, uh, the answer. So if we were to take negative 3 into this equation, <coughs> negative 3 squared minus 5 times negative 3 minus 24, and I did plug this in the calculator, and you do get zero, so we know that negative 3 works for sure, and this is how you go about checking your answers. And then if we take the 8, meaning 8 squared minus 5 times 8 minus 24, once again, you get 0 as well, so we know that 8 uh, is an answer as well. So if you want to check the answers that you've gotten, always go ahead and plug it into the original equation, like I just did, and then see that they are equal to 0, thereby confirming the fact that these two numbers are the answers. Okay. All right, let me do another one over here on the side. What if the question said to solve for x squared minus 36? Let's go ahead and factor this once again. It's going to be x plus 6, x minus 6. Again, take what's in the first parentheses, set it equal to 0, and also take what's in the second parentheses and set it equal to 0 and solve. Then we get x equals to negative 6 and x equals to 
positive 6. If you remember, when you have x squared minus 36 is equal to 0, another way, the way we've done it in our other sections, in, um, in previous sections, is that you go ahead and add 36 to the left and the right side, giving us x squared equals to 36, and then taking the square root of the left and the right side. Then we end up getting x is equal to square root of 36 is 6, but don't forget the plus minus whenever you take the square root, giving us the same answer. Okay, so that shows that this method works as well. So that's another way of checking your answers. All right, so let me do a couple more um, different ones that are a little bit more difficult um, solving quadratic equations using factoring method. Here's a more challenging question. Notice, again, we have a quadratic equation. However, the right side of the equal sign is not equal to 0, and it's equal to 15. So the first step, always, is to make the right side, or the left side, one or the other, equal to 0. In this case, it's pretty obvious that we want to make the right side equal to 0 by subtracting 15 from the left and the right. Then, of course, we get a 0 on the right side of the equal sign, and we get 10x squared plus 25x minus 15 on the left side of the equal sign. Although we could factor this equation right away, straight up, but when the numbers are big, it makes the factoring process more difficult. So what you want to do is whenever you could factor out a number, a number from three places here, then you want to do that. And I'll show you why. What can we factor out from 10, 25, and negative 15? We could take out a 5, give, giving us 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. Okay. And what do we do with that 5? We could actually go ahead and divide it by 5 on the right, or the left and the right, both the uh, left and the right side. By doing so, the 5 in the front cancels out, leaving us with only 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. And the beauty of this factoring out the 5 and dividing it by 5 on the left and on the right side is that 0 over 5 is, of course, 0. That way we get to keep the 0 on the right side. <clears throat> we get rid of the 5, make the numbers smaller. From 10, 25, and 15, we made it into 2, 5, and 3. It's a pretty uh, um, nice way to simplify your, your, your work. Now let's go ahead and factor this. Okay. Again, factoring-wise, there are many methods, but um, I'll just skip the, uh, the process and just go ahead and factor it right away. So we get 2x and x plus 3 here and minus 1 here. Once again, we're going to take whatever is in the first parentheses, 2x minus 1, set it equal to 0, and we're going to set whatever is in the second parentheses, x plus 3, set it equal to 0. And then if we solve for this, we get 2x equals 1, or x equals 1 half. And then if we solve for x plus 3, we get x equals to negative 3. So there you have it, folks. x is equal to either 1 half or negative 3. And of course, if you take that half, plug it into the original equation, or the negative 3, it, it will give you 15, of course. Okay. All right, so um, besides the factoring portion, I cover all the steps that's needed to solve a quadratic equation by factoring here. And again, if you need uh, more practice with factoring, please uh, check um, Algebra 1 and do some factoring as well, because that is important for Algebra 2 um, problems.